What class of drug does picamillin belong to? Picamillin is a nootropic. This is a group of drugs which improve brain function, increase resistance to stress, as well as physical and psychological strain. What is the main active ingredient of the drug? The active ingredient of this drug is gamma amino acid. So essentially, this drug improves the energetic qualities of brain tissue. What other properties does the drug have? How effective is it? Considering that the makeup of the drug includes niacin derivatives, it improves circulation. That is, it improves blood circulation in the brain. It is unique in that it lowers the viscosity of blood. In this way, it makes it easier for blood to circulate and pass through the blood vessels, in turn, improving nutrient and oxygen flow. It improves brain stamina and tissue in the body as a whole. Is it fair to say picamillin is an effective alternative to tranquilizers? Not at all, insofar as it belongs to a completely different class of drug. Tranquilizers are drugs which work to take away emotional and vegetative lability. This drug, on the other hand, not only produces a calming effect, but improves tolerance to stress. But the main effect is that it improves trophic function of nerve cells in the brain, as well as circulation of nutrients. In this way, it strengthens brain cells and improves the patient's ability to cope with stress. What illnesses and conditions is picamillin used to treat? There are a lot of indications. It can be used in neurology, pediatric neurology, in mild to severe psychiatric conditions, and in drug abuse treatment. It can be used in practically every kind of brain condition. This includes different kinds of encephalopathy, trauma, intoxication, infections, vascular diseases, atherosclerotic issues, and states of exhaustion. Then you've got cerebrothenic, asthenic conditions, anxious states, and anxieties. So in general, these are nervous system disorders that affect the patient's ability to lead a normal life. Can the drug help with vertigo and tinnitus? Vertigo and tinnitus. These are symptoms which are present in a large range of illnesses, including inner ear infections and diseases of the vestibular apparatus. These symptoms can also appear in cases of encephalopathy, atherosclerosis, and others. This drug is indicated for use as part of a complex treatment for these disorders. Why do athletes take picamillin? Athletes are professionals. They need endurance and good reflexes. They need the body and the brain to perform well and to be able to quickly react to changes in their environment. It can be used to help prepare for competitions, however, picamillin is not in violation of doping laws. It simply increases activity in the body, brain, and nervous system of the athlete. Therefore, doctors may prescribe them for short-term preparation for competitions. These drugs aren't prohibited and don't pose a risk to the health of the athlete. In pediatric psychiatry, in what cases is picamillin prescribed? For example, is it used to treat autism, ADHD, or delays in speech development? Yes, actually those things you listed are some of the major indications for prescribing this drug. The thing is, improved circulation and nutrient flow to the brain is helpful in treating delays in psycho-emotional and speech development. That is, kids who by two or three aren't able to speak, it might be Sjorgen Larsen syndrome or other disorders, including even cerebral palsy. So basically it's used in a complex treatment, along with immunotherapy and sessions with a speech pathologist. There might also be work with a personal trainer or a massage therapist. So a complex therapy aimed at improving central nervous system function. This is the best course of treatment. In what form is picamillin administered? Picamillin is sold in many forms, making it very convenient for practicing physicians. It is sold in tablets, for children 20 milligrams, and for adults 50. It is also offered as an injection, that is, it can be given intramuscularly or intravenously, and even in a drip. But most often it's prescribed and administered in tablet form, when and for what conditions it is offered as an injection. The intravenous, injectable form of the drug is used in cases of asthenia, acute alcohol intoxication, and in serious circulatory problems in the brain. This is in cases when we really need the drug to enter the circulatory system of the patient, that is, directly into the blood vessels. Sometimes we start with an intravenous drip, dissolved in a saline solution, or it is slowly administered intravenously. Then we move on to an intramuscular injection or tablet form. So picamillin can be taken intravenously or intramuscularly? Yes, taking into account the types of symptoms and their severity, the physician can choose which form is best. Is the muscular injection painful? Well, the dose isn't very large. It's about one to two milliliters. Most patients don't feel much pain. And how is picamillin taken intramuscularly? Is it just a standard needle, just a standard injection? Yes, it's a standard injection. How many times a day is it taken? It's taken once or twice a day depending on the symptoms present, body mass of the patient and doctor's discretion. And how long is the typical course of treatment? 
It's usually injected for 10 to 15 days. So in the beginning, it can be taken intravenously in a drip or slow injection. It's then further taken as an intramuscular injection, adding up to a total of 15 to 20 days. It can then be administered in tablet form after that. How are the tablets taken? Considering the tablets can contain different doses, for children it's 20 milligrams and for adults 50, the doctor can easily control the dose. As a rule, it's taken three times a day in doses of one to two tablets. So if it's a teenager or a young person, let's say 20 years old, then it should be 40 milligrams. If it's a large adult, sometimes we might prescribe two tablets at 100 milligrams three times a day. That is, as much as required to achieve an effect. Should it be taken before or after eating? As a rule, it should be taken after eating. However, again, there aren't any indications that it interferes with the digestive system. Just to make sure there aren't any complications, though, it's best to take it after eating and with a glass of water 30 minutes after taking it. Can it be taken at night? Yes, it doesn't interfere with sleep. This drug doesn't directly increase energy, so it's okay to take it in the evening. After how long does it take effect, and how long does the therapeutic effect last? This drug is interesting because its stimulating, calming, therapeutic effect starts working on the first day of treatment. The effect begins gently and the patient feels a gradual improvement over the course of three days. Let's suppose I prescribe the drug and a patient comes in for treatment. That very day I can expect to see an improvement in their demeanor, more activity and reduced anxiety. Their anxieties and former worries begin to fade. How long can the drug be taken continuously? The length of treatment can vary, anywhere from one and a half months to three. The length of treatment and dose might vary, but the main goal is to alleviate the symptoms with both medication and psychotherapy. How long should the patient wait between courses? It's recommended that breaks last between five to six months. From what age can children be prescribed picamillin? Children older than three to five years old can take it. When we strongly feel that the symptoms associated with some kind of developmental delay, psychological delay, or speech delay necessitate it. This might include being withdrawn or signs of autism or cerebral palsy. In cases like this, where a child experiences anxiety or social disadaptation, we might prescribe it in small doses. In what doses? The drug should be administered in a single tablet twice a day in the morning and afternoon. The dose for children is 20 milligrams. Can you abruptly stop taking picamillin? It is strongly advised that any course of treatment should be gradually reduced to the lowest effective dose before stopping. Are there any side effects of this drug? Side effects are quite rare. This drug, insofar as it's administered even to children, has been proven in practice to have very few side effects. Sometimes patients experience vertigo, headaches, and nausea, but these symptoms occur when reducing the dose or stopping treatment. Is lethargy a side effect of picamillin? No, this hasn't been observed. Does the drug raise or lower blood pressure? Does it have an effect? Inasmuch as it improves circulation in the brain and affects arterial pressure, it's been observed that it may help lower blood pressure a bit. This lowers the risk of hypertension in the patient. Are overdoses of picamillin rare? Overdose is very rare, but it does affect vascular tone and the central nervous system. It can cause headaches, nausea, and sometimes insomnia and anxiety. These are states caused by stimulating the central nervous system. Can the patient build tolerance to the drug? The patient can't build tolerance to the drug and it doesn't cause withdrawal symptoms. Is there anyone who shouldn't take picamillin? Can it be taken during pregnancy or breastfeeding? The drug is not recommended for pregnant women or women who are breastfeeding, nor is it recommended for children under the age of three. It should not be taken by individuals with kidney disease or acute circulatory conditions in the brain. How about patients with epilepsy and diabetes? It's better not to prescribe the drug in those cases. How does picamillin interact with other drugs? Considering it's used to treat circulatory disorders in the brain, it's often used in combination with other nootropics. In cases like this, it complements these other drugs well. However, if we're talking about analgesics, especially opioids, it could compound their effect. When taken with sleeping pills, especially barbiturates, it might negate the effect. This information must be taken into account when prescribing picamillin. Are there any analogs to picamillin? Yes, there are. They belong to the nootropic class of drug. This includes nootropil, fizam, nofen. These drugs generally produce an analogous effect.